Shalom, everyone. Welcome back to the Tzion. We are we're in the middle of the Adloka, the COVID, the yard site of the Holy of Abshmel, in English book. We are now to do by the Matzeva from the Tzion of Abshmel, in English book. Amenash is our Shliach. He's going to touch the Matzeva with his right hand so that you can see where the Matzeva is. And you can see we, had, we began earlier this morning with our look of the different people. We're going to say Tillam. So if we can see the next Peric on the screen. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for the screen to be shared so I can see which where the Tillam is. Anyway, we're saying of Dalad, the Dove and Mismoy. Now they know you are at some loyal table of your Jivo. You are Yam Yusodo. I'll know is you for you know me, Alabash, Adoinoi, me, Okum, and Kotchoi. The Gira by him of Alevo, I shall in no son of Shov Nashi, or in his Balamiamo. Is of a rock of me, Sarinoi. Stogamelayishoi. <laughs> Now we're going to the next capital, which is number 27. Le David Adonai Oiri Vichi, Mimi Iro, Adonai Moit Chayai, Mievchot, the Kroivalai Mariam, Mechos Besori, Tori Oivili, Emukosu and Apollo, Impano Lai Martin Loyiro Libi, Dogma Lai Mukhoma Besois and Ipateach, Akashu Alti Mies Adonai. Oiso Avakesh, Shift the Vesa de Nuko in Mihai, Lars is Benoim Adonoi, Lavake Bey Holoi, Kids Benaini, the Sukoi, Yem Royas Tirani, the Sesa Oloi, the Tsuo, Yoremani, the Ato Yom Roishi Aloivi, Svivoisai, the Ezbuch of Oloi, Zivri Sua, Oshiro Vazamo Ladonoi, Shmari Nokoli Ekho, Honeni Vaneni. The Roma Libi, Bakshu Fonai as Bonejo, Adoino Yavakesh, Altaze Bonejo Yemeni, Altad, Beav Avdejo, as Rosio Iso, Alte Cheni, Maltazveni, El Heishi, Ki Ivi, Ovi, Vimi, Azabuni, Adoino Yasveni, Oireni, Adoino de Akejo, Munecheni, Bermisho, Laman Shoyoi, Alte Neni, Nevis Soroi, Ki Komovi de Sheka, Vive Homos, Ulia Manti de Rois, we're going to see another capital of two. Um, we're going to right now say another capital, which is number. Lamed Tess. No. Hmm? No. I, uh, yeah, I can't see. I don't get it. can't be that one. Chotes? Chotes. Okay, I'm sorry. The hand is still muted. Do you hear me? Okay. Okay. Everyone hears me? See, if I touch the hand, it makes a problem. Ms. Murilo Dovid. How will I know the Elim? How will I know the Yoyce? How will I know the Voice Moy? Is that what I know the Basil Koydish? Quail out in El Amoyim. El Covid, I don't know your Mayim Rabim. Quail out in Bakoya. Quail out in Behodo. 
now, You hear me now? Okay, I'll say it again. I'm sorry, there was an interruption there. That uh, the um, I'm saying Lachaim, the Schuss of Rav Schmelke, Marina Av, Shmuel Schmelke, Tzihirsh Alevi, Hussein, you see there, Amnashe is Ashliach. The light left on behalf of everyone, and I'm going to mention a few names now. For this is the second session, so I'll ask Menashe to put in a left on behalf of Michael Tzvi Ben Libi Aviva from Edgware, England. Yeah. Edgware, England. Where are you, Menashe? <clears throat> a left for Michael Tzvi Ben Libi Aviva. You should be healthy, and the whole family should be healthy. And she Matsliach. Now we'll ask another on behalf of Elio Nochum Ben Masudi. Another left, please put in from Beit Shemesh. He should Matsliach and have be able to marry off his children, Kalut and Avnachis, and from his new grandchildren, child, and many more. Mir Hashem. We'll have another left for David Ben Sola. And Menashe is our Mishriach, Lila Nishmas, Shmuel Shmelke. And then we have Nelson Yehuda Ben Pesha Toiva from Yerushalayim. And also Alexander Yaakov Ben Brocha Bela from Besaic, New Jersey. We'll ask Ramanasha to put in. As you can see, there are, we're mentioning all the other Kvitlach. You see on the side, there is all the Kvitlach of people that have asked to be helped in the past, for the, in the present and in the future. We put them on the, this rolling index so that people that have been mentioned today in front of the Tzian as it slowly goes by. The next one is Broche Zisa Bas Pestel Blima from Antwerp. And her whole family, they should be healthy and they should be able to see the next one is Chaim Shevach Ben Miriam from Yerushalayim. May his family be blessed with everything that he needs, good health and good good tevis. Then we have Pnina Basola from Bnei Brak. And we're going to say, we're going to tell a story from and this story is actually about the Yotzeit. Yotzeit took place, it takes place tomorrow on Shabbos. And the Rav HaKodesh of Shmelik in English book said before he was Nifta where he wanted to be buried. As I said, the cemetery in English book is one of the few cemeteries that remained just the way they were before World War II. And uh, therefore, the uh, you see the Tzion as it was, they fixed it up, they covered it with a gold covering on top, and they made the letters darker again. Right next to Rav Shmelk is his Talmud, Amot Chavanet, you can't see him in the picture. But he said he wanted to be buried next to 
the Tzemach Tzedek, who is to his right, and he is, he is, he left a, 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 a Tzavor, a will, that nobody should be buried next to him. <clears throat> so when the Bechev Kedisha knew that, and when Abba was Nifta, they had a problem, because he said nobody should be buried next to him, so they went to look back up in the books. They had these books on the, of the Beis HaChayim, which told many, many interesting stories, but we don't have time for them today. And in there, they found that he said nobody should be buried in that place until, until Rishchodesh Iyo, the first day of Iyo, in the year that Rabbi Shmelka was Nifta. So they realized that even the Tzemach, the Tzemach Tzedek, who was not, this is not Bavich Tzemach Tzedek, this is the previous one, who lived in Niklishburg, was a great Talmud Chochem, and he saw that uh, Rabbi Shmelka would be buried next to him, because he said, on, only on this and this day can they bury someone. That was exactly the day of the Ptira of Rebbe Rabshmelke. Now, the uh, we will now sing a ning in this time, in these difficult times when people are at home, and it's interesting. I recall seeing recently there's a doctor in Switzerland, a doctor who I presume would still be able to give advice to other doctors, but he was a goy. And he said when he was 103, that he took his own life because he saw no purpose in, in continuing to live. By he, that's not the case. By Jews, even though we're in isolation, were able to, to learn to be misfollowed whether it's from the porches, as long as it's according to the rules. Baruch Hashem, today we can learn to have an outside the shuls, especially there was something, the Mokim Kodesh, we can't have an shul yet. It may change next week, it may change later, but we're next to the shul, we have in there when we have an overflow outside, but on Sukkot we have in there, but it's a terrible time for Kla Yisrael. And the thing that keeps us going is Torah, to be able to sit and learn and tefillah. So I'll just sing a nigun. I go, I go, I miss it for see. It's interesting that Rabbi uh, Shmelke, in his time, was considered a greater Talmud Chochem than his brother Balaflo. They were both originally Talmudim of the Gro, and then they left to go to the Magid of Mizrich. They felt they needed to grow in, in a certain type, way of spirituality, and they went to the uh, Magid of Mizrich, and the Balaflo, however, studied Torah in a Lomdisha fashion, not because of the Gro, but the first safer of Lomdis Shas is the Balaflo, the Makna, the Aflo, Aksubas and Kiddushin. And it's interesting, a Hasidic Rebbe was the first 
one who wrote a long for on Gemara. We had in Kochim, the Svasemis was also a Siddish Rebbe. In his time, there were many people who thought the Svasemis became a Rebbe by 18 years old. How much could he know already? How learned could he be? Today, of course, everyone knows about the Svasemis. The Briskarov knew himself who the Svasemis was. In any case, the Svasemis was the first Siddish Sefer on Londis. The reason we don't have the Torah of Rav is because he learned in the style of Pilpul, which was different. However, the Rambam made it possible, the Rambam made it possible from through, or made it obligatory, that Aloha remains ultimately the same. It doesn't matter how you learn Torah. The Torah was we coming to going to Shavuos. The Torah was going to be is given on Shavuos. Was going to be offered to all the nations of the world, and they all declined. And only Kal Yisrael accepted the Torah. Only Kal Yisrael. But it was prepared for every nation. Every nation thinks differently. Every nation has a different view on how the world looks. I felt on Shabbat different. Every nation. And when they didn't accept Torah, there were 70 nations. And therefore, Chazal tell us, Ayin Ponim Torah. There's 70 ways to understand Torah. 70 different ways. Because we took those 70 ways. Abaki Vega says, on the Mishnah that says, Mishkech Kam, Mishkeno in his gala, then there will be a circle and, we, and that, everyone will stand around in a circle and say, Hashem kivinu nagilo This is Hashem we were waiting for. Let's be happy in his, in his salvation. And he, he, he explains, he explains, the circle is unique, has 360 degrees. But from the center, everyone is equidistant. From the center of the circle, everyone's equidistant. So sometimes we're 180 degrees away from each other, but ultimately we're all in agreement. That's the Koyach of Torah. So the Pilpul also came to the final conclusion that of the Rambam, and it had to base itself on that, otherwise it wouldn't have been accepted. So Rabbi Shmuelke explained why we find by a power, like the Kabonis that are brought, and on Chagim, we have a par, which is an uh, ox or a, 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 a bull. And also, we have rams, which are older, two year old uh, sheep, and we have sheep. And Rav Shmelke told about the rights, my older brother Rav Shmelke taught me that why. When you bring a power, is it you bring also three measures, three astoinim for the power, and two astoinim la ayo, and one he's soaring for the keves. And he said, I don't understand this that so well because I'm not a kubo, but he says his brother, Rabbi explained to him that when you have a mind to shame Hashem and every month has a different siruf, a different combination of the letters, usually it's yud k vov k the month of year is yud k k vov and it's from Sukim that Ari gave it to us, and the reason, uh, I mean, when you have a mind, by going Shafer, if you look at the Kabbalistic Siddur, now that you, I'll understand it or you'll understand it, but the shame Hashem, if it's written with the concept of Avram, who's chesed, so then it, it, on the each letter there's a segue. There are three dots. Three dots are like three yidlach, three yidin, three tenths. That's why three tenths are used for a par, because Avoka wrote Avram. Avram ran to get the par. And Yitzchok, instead of him being brought on the Mizbeach, an ayah was brought, and when you have the kavona of an ayah of Yitzchak in the Shem Hashem, every letter has a shvo, two dots, the silent shh. 
on the, each of the letters. That's two dots, it's two esroinim, two yidalach. And finally, keves, <coughs> keves is Yaakov, which is a cholam, which is a, just a dot without the vov, the O sound, oi or O or ow, depending where you come from. And that's the Yisorim like Keves. That's what the Yisorim like Keves is. Thus, we he learned that from his brother and Shaykh to Rishchodesh, and we're happy to be here in Nikolsburg together with you. And we're going to uh, continue with the. We're going to continue with um, the next uh, capital Tillum, which is 30, I believe. Am I right? Rabbi Menachem, Rabbi... Yeah, I don't see it on the screen any longer either. I think it's 30. It's 33. 30. Right. So we're going to say, Miss Majira, <laughs> And now we'll say capital 33, which is usually recited on every yurt site of any great tzaddik. And you should have it on your screen. Ranu Tzadikim. Ranu Tzadikim Badayin Alayi Shom Nova Zilo. Oyu Ladini Bechino Ben Ebel Osa Zamuloi. Shiyoloi Shiyachodesh Eitiv Nagim Eskua. Yosho Dvaradi Noi Uchol Maaseyu Be'amuno. Oyev Tzadok Omishba Otchesad Adi Noi Molo Oretz. Dvaradi Noi Shomayim Nazo Vahafiv Kol Tzvom. Koyin Izkani Me'a Yom Noi Sim Ba'itzo Oyim Ois. Yiru Me'a Adi Noi Kol Oretz. Emeli Yoguru Kodesh Vesever. We have, uh, we're going to sing a name look over the the Hilula. Rachim no, Rachim no, Rachim no. It's part of Birch Amozing. Rachim no, Hashem Melikeinu. Rachim no, Rachim no, Rachim no. Al Yisrael, Amecho. Rachim no, Rachim no, Rachim no, Rachim no, Hashem Melikeinu. A Yisrael Amer, a Yerushalayim, a Tzion, Mishkan Kiyodechon. Again, Rachim no, Rachim no, Rachim no, Hashem Melikeinu. 
You can put a left in for his Chaim and Chaitche. And also, Moshe Chaim and Henny and their entire families, they should all be healthy. They should be able to continue to be Marbit's Torah. And also, we have a left there for Svi Isaac Ben Mariam Chana and his whole family. They should be able to. Have naches, everyone should be healthy and be able to serve Hashem the way they would like to. And then another one, Rabban Asher, please, for Tobalea Bas Rachel from Hanof. The others were from Brooklyn. And then we have from Nebrak, Shifra Gitel Bas Sola. And Meir Sholem and Shifra Gitel. And all from Bnei Brak, the whole families and all of Bnei Brak, Baruch Hashem, things are getting better there, but we have to have, everyone should have a Fuhr Shalema. Then we have Malke Bas Bela, Fuhr Shalema, she should be well, she should be a uh, mother, a uh, wife to her husband, they should live for many years together, and may have had some Shona. Then we have from Beta. Shimon Ben Sorabela. He and his entire family, they should be healthy. And also Sorabela Vasenja Peso, that she too should live to see Yiddish Nachas. We'll stop there for a moment and we, we should have in mind the uh as you have of Yerushalayim. That Hashem uh, should bless you from Yerushalayim. I often tell over the Torah that was said by Rameo and Amshinov, where I discussed to know Zatzal, the father of the president, Amshinov a Rebbe, who explained, the Gemara tells us, that grandchildren are like children. In America, they have a, a, not a license plate, but they have some, a sticker they put on cars. I love my grandchildren so much. If I had known I love, I would love them so much, I would have had them before my children. So it's actually a chazal that grandchildren are like children. The Chedusha Rim, who lost all of his children in his lifetime, 12 before they were married, 
and only one who was married, who ultimately had other children, but he passed away young in the lifetime of the Chlusharim Leoleinu, and the Chlusharim was devastated. He cried. At the other children, he didn't cry. So they asked him, why are you crying? So he said, because now I can't keep the mitzvah of, I cannot keep the mitzvah of, um, I can't, of Yishanantal of Anecha teaching you a son. So he said to him, what do you mean you have the Sasemis who you can teach? He says, Necham Toni Bonai, Necham Toni, you have consoled me. So Rav Meir Miamsham said, when it says, may you be blessed in Yerushalayim, we're here in Yerushalayim, we feel like we're in Niklishburg because we see the Tzian, we see the, 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 the Bloka, but still we're, we're hoping for Mashiach in Yerushalayim. Way when the Six Day War what happened, we all thought that we wouldn't have to worry about our grandchildren living in Eretz Yisrael. Now our grandchildren are grown; they're going to marry. They're marrying, becoming married, getting married, soon be married, having children of their own. We have to worry again about our existence in Eretz Yisrael. So he said, "Yerach Hashem Itzion, Rebbe Tov Yerushalayim." All the days of your life. <clears throat> and see children to your grandchildren. If children, grandchildren are equivalent to children, so see children to your grandchildren. So I had a great grandfather come over to me after a brisk where I mentioned this. He said, Rebbe, you gave a brocha to everyone. I didn't get a brocha because I'm already a great grandfather. So I said to him, you know, we can take it one step further. If a son is like a, a grandson is like a son, when it says sons to your sons, it means grandsons to your grandsons. You should be great, great grandparents. Today, especially with this terrible Magifo, it's we're mostly concerned, all of us grandparents are all uh, living a difficult world where we can't touch our grandchildren, we can't hug our great-grandchildren, we can't sit with them, have them sit on our lap, make us happy. They should help them that this should go by, and they should be zoicha, see the beauty of Yerushalayim. So I'll sing in Nigun the of Yerushalayim, Hashem, it's, these are all my own nigunim. I don't have people here to help me at the moment. Remember other ones, other ones, but uh, I'm sure you know other nigunim as well. But this is a nigun of my own. About <clears throat> and if you want to sing along, you're welcome to do so from your homes. I wish I could hear it. It would also bring a smile to my face. <laughs> Rebbe to Yerushalayim, Koyel Yemei Chayecho, Koyel Yemei Chayecho, Yerebe Ha'ashem Mitziyon, Rebbe to Yerushalayim, Koyel Yemei Chayecho,
Mishmelke, uh, before we put some more left in for the, let me tell you a story that Mishmelke uh, had a very good friend who was going to Hasana. In those days, they didn't order buses. They had wagons. They could have four, five, six people in a wagon. We have 10 wagons. We have 50, 60 people. And the family was going after the overall. That's why they used to have an overall in one city. The hospital would take place elsewhere, long distance away. And he, his friend became a robe in a city. And then finally, his children had to be married off. And they were going to a wedding. On the way, they had a Dalmar. So what did they do? They stopped at a rest stop. They didn't have rest stops like we have today. But they stopped and they down. Now, after being for a few hours in a coach, which didn't have the uh, springs that we have, <clears throat> they therefore uh, got, out, got out, changed to different coaches to be with other people, speak to them, meet the family, the whole family, the friends. And nobody noticed that the grandfather didn't get on one of the coaches. They figured he must have gone on a different coach. And they went on. And he was busy davening. And when he finished davening, <clears throat> he did a mistake. And he went further into the forest instead of staying where he was. And when they finally realized they didn't have him, they came back to find, look for him. They couldn't find him. And they made the chasana. When they came and, and three weeks later, he was found. He was still alive and he found the place and he came back to the city. And it was just one problem that when they said on Thursday, he didn't say, he said, it's Friday. So he told him, Rebbe. You're mistaken, it's Thursday. He says, no, he was obstinate. He was very stubborn. He says, no, it is, it's Thursday. So they didn't know what to do. And he said, you mean Michal Shabbos because you're keeping the wrong day. And they, they didn't know what to do. So he, um, <clears throat> He wrote to Rabbi Shmelke, asked him what to do about this. Uh, Shmelke said, you know what? Let me come for Shabbos. Next Shabbos, I'll come. You have to listen to what I tell you to do. So by the next Thursday, he was there. And Thursday morning, the Rav said, I gave him Shish Yibbe Shabbos. And afterwards, he told Rabbi, Rabbi Shmelke, oh, you'll be with us for Shabbos. I'll be able to have you with many things. Shmelke shook his head, it was agreeable. And when the Rav went home, all the people, he told all the people, put on your Shabbos begot. It came Thursday night, everybody was with the Shrimal, with the Shabbos garments. And Rav Shmelke said, uh, he, the Rav said to Rav Shmelke, you daven for us. He says, I came to hear my friend. I didn't come to Davin on my own. I came to hear my friend. So he said, okay, I'll Davin. So he Davin. After he Davin, everybody went to the Rav's house together with Rav Shmelke, all dressed in their Shabbos clothing. And the Rav said to Rav Shmelke, you know what? You make it first. So he says, no, it's not correct. The Rav should make it. I came to hear him. And in fact, I brought special wine for the Rav to drink. And he would Rav do me the pleasure, the honor, drinking the wine that I brought, and the Rav said yes. So he gave him the, he poured the wine, and the Rav made Kiddush, and right after he's made Kiddush, he fell into a deep stupor, a deep sleep. And Rav Shmulke motioned to everybody to leave the room. He told him, go home, take off your Shabbos clothes. We'll gather to you tomorrow at the same time. And they left the Rav sleeping in his chair by the tish, and sure enough, they went through Friday morning, they came Friday night, and they they actually, uh, by Friday night, they wore the Shabbos begotten again. He says, let's go back to the Rav's house. 
came back to the Rav's house, and the Rav was still sleeping. The Rav was still sleeping. So he, Abishmelga nudged him a little bit. He says, can I make Yiddish too? The Rav woke up. Oh, what? He said, can I make Yiddish too? He said, yeah, go ahead and make Yiddish. So the Rav and Abishmelga made Yiddish. And you, of course, had mind to be right to the Rav also, might see the Rav. And everybody from that time on changed to the clock of the Rav as far as the Rav was concerned. That was the way Abishmelke was able to influence this person. Susi Yogan Aleinu, that discussion is making for all of us. We're going to light some more left of Menashe Ashliach, the Rav of Bruno. He's going is Bor Hashem in, in at the Tzian, as you can see. If he'll put his hand on the Tzian again, just to show that that's the Tzian of our Shmelke. And that look, as you can see, is, is burning. This is Rabbi Yisrael Aram and so of Bela. If you could put a left in, please. And also for his brother Yeshua Ben So of Bela. He should also be Matzliach. He's also a Rav. As a community, they should all be well. Everyone's community should be well. And they should have nachas from their children, their whole families, their parents should have nachas from them. And then uh, Bechil Mechel Ben Sorabela, who also is uh, someone who's very special from Highland Park. And he has a nice community there. And Bor Hashem, he's introducing Hasidus to different parts of New Jersey. And of course, in, the, in Flatbush, there are a few Pinchas Dovids. My grandfather's name was Pinchas Dovid. There's a few of them. And uh, there's Pinchas Dovid, Ben Leofradel, who's a Boston Rebbe in Flatbush. So we could throw in a left for him. And Pinchas Dovid, Ben Chenegito, who is our Yeshiva in Flatbush. He, he should be there as well to be able to continue to give his shiurim. I was always should make it possible to do so. And we should be there that all of Chai Yisrael will be able to get back to learning. Then Chaim ben Miriam Hakoyan should have a refuish lemo, be able to come to Yisrael and live here and see his children and grandchildren grow up to be Bnei Torah. And then Ben Siyam ben Shane Gittel also, and Alta Zeb ben Shane Gittel should both have a atzloche in Torah and their parents should see lots of nachas from them. And then from Boston, Massachusetts, there's Shabsi Ben Kaina, who he's a for Shlemo. He should see nachas from his daughter, and we should be able to celebrate many singles together. We'll sing a nigin the COVID. The Hilula.
Before that, the Valar floor was the first Lavnisha Sefer on Shas. Uh, in general, introduced the Chodoidi for Shabbos to sing the Chodoidi uh, in Shul. Back in Ponovich, they still don't sing the Chodoidi. Uh, it was one of the disagreements between the Hasidic movement and those who were not Hasidic. And it's interesting that there was one thing that uh, I mean, Yankov Emden already mentions it that was composed. And we mentioned the name of Shem, Yud Kei Vov Kei. Uh, why, uh, what has every month has a different combination of it. But there's one thing that's made for Shabbos that, that the first letters of each stanza begin with one of the letters of Hashem Hashem. Was made by Rabban and Kalino, and the whole world sings it. And it's a relatively new mirrors. Most mirrors go back uh, much, much earlier. It's an earlier period of time, and we'll sing that over the Shabbos Shchodesh Yorzeit of Shmelke Miniklishburg, who in all all. Uh, uh, Possibility met with Avraham Kalina and will sing it. I'm sure you all know it. Oh, yeah. 
We'll say the Rosen and all the tools that we said. And right now we're continuing on Capital Tadik Aleph 91. <laughs> I mean, I was Shelly, I'm my job, boy, Miss Bushy. 
On Friday, the day, the sixth day of creation, and Adam Rishon, uh, was complete and rectified much of the sin of Adam Rishon. Over here on the post, it says, Moshe Amor Rehano, Shmuel, Bukhari Shemoy. 
Why is Shmuel equivalent to Moshe Aaron? We know from Shmuel, the Bezin of Shmuel was the one who decided that Moyavi and Vlemea is also to come a Moyavi, a male Moavi, is forbidden to come to Klai Yisrael and marry into ever. But Moavi is like Rusa Moavi, the, the females were not included in that edict. That was decided by the Bezin of Shmuel. By the Bezin of Shmuel and Ovi. So why was Shmuel so unique? Why was Shmuel going to be punished for having said Aloha if Neiraboy before Elia Queen? So he explained everything we have is Kabbalah and Moshe and Sinai. And when a person doesn't adhere to that which he receives from his Rebbe's, then he is not keeping to Aloha and Moshe and Sinai. He's not keeping to it. He, and Shmuel, even though he, he, he said something, Eli was afraid that it's not halachal and Moshe Mishinai. Therefore, along came, along came Shmuel, and the Torah tells us that Shmuel is unique and that we have Kabbalah from Shmuel on Avi as well. All Malchus based David is dependent upon Shmuel. So that's why they're equivalent. Moshe v'Aram Reihan of Shmuel b'Koy Rishimoy. Mizmor the Soida. We'll say Mizmor the Soida. Then we'll put in some more left into the Hadlok. Mizmor the Soida. Reihan of Nikol Oretz. Mizmor the Soida. B'Simcha. Reihan of Nikol Benano. Who got the Nikol Benim? Was on the Yachlo. I'm going to say Marisoy. For Yisroh the Soida has a Rosh of Besilo. Reihan of Baruch Shimoy. Kitay v'Adik Nolei Alam Chazoi. V'Adoi v'Adoi Emunosoi. We uh, will now tell a mindset from the Rebbe of Shmelke, and then we will first of all light, ask him, I'm an Asher, if we can light some more. Are you the I'm an Asher? Not, we'll tell the story first. Okay. Are you the I'm an Asher? You have a fiddle to put in also. I'm an Asher is putting a fiddle into each box. As you can see, there's a box there. If I'm not sure, could pick up the box just to show us we can't see it in the movie. In the, in the, in the it's not visible. Maybe you put it down below the, the fiddle box, should be put next to the fire where the lock is underneath it. Did you hear me, I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, where's the box of the fiddle? <laughs> Anyway, tell in the meantime, it's, huh? Maybe you can see it like this. No, 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 no don't move that. Where's the box kept? Where, where, where's the box right now? Over there, just move it, move it closer. Move it closer to the camera. Move it closer to the camera, the box. Bring it closer to here, not next to the, it can't be moved? Okay. It's going to be moved, I'm sorry. Okay, you can't move it? Just leave it there then. Just leave it, just leave it. We'll put in a left. We'll put in a left. Lilu Nishmas. Abshmul Shmelke Ben Atzviyesh Halevi. And this is from Melbourne. Shmule Achan Rothel from Melbourne. We'll put a fiddle into the box. Mordechai Moishe Ben Rochaleya from Hanof. Should have a voice lame, a big time of And he gives many shurim. And he should be well. And from Manchester, England, Henya Henya Baschana Melko should have a Ravua Shlema and also Avram Ben Sora should have a Ravua Shlema. We could throw in a left for Avram Ben Sora. Then also from Hanov, you have it as a We put in a left for that. Thank you, Menashe Zarashliach. As you see, he's putting down a kvittel. And then Pesach Ruvain Ben So, who is a great doctor, has keep him, been keeping everybody healthy here. And I know if he should be healthy himself, and not from all of his children and grandchildren. And then from Moscow, Alexander Ben Rochel, he and his entire family should have be well, healthy, and be Reim Ushleimim. And then Matul Fege Basso Sosha. 
from Brooklyn should be well and be able to continue to uh, head her family as the matriarch, someone who remembers going back a long time to the first boss in the Rebbe. We'll now tell a story about the Rabbi Shmelke, as we mentioned, Ramot Rabbanet just pointed the scene, and it's right next to Menashe. If you pointed the scene of Ramot Rabbanet, which is right next to, you can't see it's on the other side of the tree, but that's where, no, no, don't move it, don't move it, don't move it. It's fine, it's fine. I just wanted them to know it's right next to Rabbi Shmelke. And one time he was learning, and we mentioned Rabbi Melech Menashe went by and saw him, heard him learning. And after he finished learning, he told him, you should know, uh, he saw it, he listened to it, he saw a young man, and that was the going of Moshe Manet, he was learning Torah. So he, he stood there for an hour listening, and Moshe didn't see him, didn't notice him, he was so busy learning. When he stopped learning, so Amelot walked over to him and said to him, my brother, do tshuva, you have to do tshuva. Because after he hears the learning for nonstop for an hour, he didn't even notice him. So Ramoth um, didn't know what to do, so he went to his Rebbe. It was his Rebbe, Rabbi Shmelke, in English book, and he said to him, what happened? What? I don't understand. I'm learning Torah, and, and Rabbi Melech admonishes me that I have to do tshuva. Why so? So Rabbi Shmelke told him, the reason is because you're spending too much time. In other words, on fasting, he used to fast a lot. He says, the time you're wasting on fasting, your weakness is the reason why you are uh, you were admonished by Reb, the Rebbe of Melech Malajensk. And from then on, he understood more of the Hasidic idea. Before Shabbos was Chodesh, it's interesting, I point out very often that Novi tells us that uh, when Mashiach will come, what will be we'll read the Haftarah on Shabbos it says it shall be every Shabbos every Chodesh every Chodesh people will go up to Yushalayim not just for the three Golem, three festivals but every Chodesh and also every Shabbos. And the question comes to mind, you know, what's more often? What's told you? What happens more often? Technically, Shabbos happens every week. Shabbos only happens once a month. This question is asked by Rab Hashem Shmuel, the son of the Avnei Nezer, of Sochachov. And he says this is his... He gives his answer that his father, the Avnei said the reason why Rishchodesh is uh, Rishchodesh is mentioned first is because Rishchodesh is called the head of the month. Just like the head is something that controls all the senses of a person, so too a, the head of the month controls the entire month. Shabbos, we find the bracha of the whole week comes from Shabbos. And therefore, that's the idea of why it's mentioned. And, and the Haftar is interesting. We don't mention the Haftar of Shabbos, the Musaf of Shabbos. We don't mention every Shabbos. We only mention it when it's Shabbos or Shkodesh. Why so? Because the Haftar of Shabbos is only two psukim. And you can't lane only two psukim. However, when Shkodesh falls on Shabbos, so then we lane also the Muslim of Shabbos. So it could be that that's another reason why Chodesh is mentioned first. Because when you have Oyvedei Chodesh B'Chodshoi, when you have the Haftar of Shabbos, then you can also have the Haftar of the Musaf. Korban is mentioned in the Haftar of Shabbos because we have those two kin to those of Chodesh. I re there's another thought that came to mind that when we have this combination of a Yotai that the whole world, especially the Jewish people, is all over the world should be saved from from 
uh, this magaifo, we should go back to living a normal life, which we didn't appreciate. We didn't appreciate it. So we have to know to appreciate what we have. And we, God gave us a hundred years of good health and uh, uh, problems, polio, other things. We have to be thankful for that. Yes, we have to. That's the koyach. That's that's the strength. Shabbos of Rishchodesh. When we have all three together, the the combination of Rishchodesh and Shabbos and the outside of Rabbi Meilach, of Rabbi Shmelkim and Nicholas Book, we have all three together. So it epitomizes what we call Olam Shona Benefesh, world, time, and place. Whenever we say Vaihulu, Vaihulu is said because uh, it is Vaihulu uh, is, is a witness that God created the world. Vaihulu like created the world. Vaihulu is a, a witness that Hashem created the world. That's world. That's oil. Shabbos is a witness that Hashem created the world. And the Shkodesh is the concept that, in a sense, Kali is given the ability to control time, to decide when the Shkodesh, when the moment begins. That's time, the control of time. And man is represented by Rosh Melke, Menikulish Book, a person who fulfilled, <clears throat> was the epitome in his time of a tzaddik in all aspects. Of Torah, mitzvahs, chasidus, you know, I, I'll, I'll also add uh, add to that that um, the Rebbe Zatzal, the Boston Rebbe Zatzal, asked me just a while prior to his patira. We know that every day of the week, Sunday has a part, and Monday. Tuesday as a partner, Wednesday, Thursday as a partner, Friday, Shabbos complained, I don't have a partner. And I could have told him, and I could have told him that Shabbos, that Yisrael is your, is your uh, partner. Is your partner. So he, he, he's, the question comes up, the Rebbe asked me, so long ago, how do you combine man with time? How is that done? So I waited for an answer expectantly. But the Rebbe said, I, I said, so he said, why don't you answer? So I said, I'm waiting for the Rebbe to tell me. So he said to me, no, I want to hear from you. I had just learned this last Emes. So as Emes said, when we say, Visham of Nei Yisrael, that Shabbos, last is a Shabbos. He so kept the Shabbos. Lassois. Lassois here simply means to keep the Shabbos. To keep the Shabbos. Lassois is a Shabbos. But he translates it to make the Shabbos. Every Jew makes his own Shabbos. Yes, we all have the same obligations. Why do people go to Rebbe's? Why? Because among the group of people there, especially some great Rebbe's, they're creating a Shabbos which we could not create. We're participating in that creation of that great Shabbos. And therefore, last is a Shabbos means to actually create it. When do we create it? It says, when Mashiach will come, Me'ein on Amhabo Yom Shabbos Menucha. Me'ein on Amhabo Yom Shabbos Menucha. We're creating that Shabbos of the future. That Shabbos, the Klai Yisrael will benefit, will live in the 7,000th year, the Chazal tells us it'd be a, a, a world of Shabbos, a world that's totally Shabbos. But what world will we be living in? The time frame that we created, that we created. That's why it's so important to, on Shabbos to set it aside as a day that one goes into his, uh, into his, Spirituality. May this rich bring us the fulfillment 
of world oilam, the Shabbos itself representing that completion of creation and Chodesh time, the ability to utilize that time properly. And man, that we should all be able to to do that, which Hakadosh Baruch wants from us. So we'll sing a ding of Me'ena Lamhabo. Which you all know. Me ain't I love my boy. 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 Me ain't We're up to Kuf Zion, which Hashem they've instituted to say Friday night, and I understand that Taimanim also <coughs> say it. They say it later. They say it like a bowl of Shabbos. And it's 107. I think it should be on the screen. I'll ask 107 to be on the screen, please. Oh, you like Nikki, you know, how they move out of your eyes, you're going to be out of your mouth, just keep so. Miss Omi Mahom is over in the Yamazo, I'm in Mishra, and everyone is over there, and I'm the same as I'm in the Zato. A Zagra, I'm in the Zala, I'm the Gizay, I'm the Yatsi, 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 I'm I I'm 
We're going to sing this last two kapitlach, and when we finish, that will conclude this session. And the Nigan is from the Yudia Kodesh, who was uh, also an ancestor of ours. And we will um, <clears throat> sing his Nigan to these two kapitlach. I thank you for being with us. And Mir Hashem at 2.30, which is approximately an hour from now, we will go to the final session, which will last the Mir Hashem till 4.30. We want to thank Ramanasha for making this possible. Without Ramanasha being there, we couldn't get there. So sometimes you see how, how important it is to have a good friend who, even if he lives far away, so if, we have a good friend, and like this, he comes from Bruno to Niklisburg. We can be together, and I'm happy to be together with him now also.